We're here at the Fully Charged Live Show in Farnborough to speak to some of our home energy experts to find out their guidance on what clean tech you should install in your home. Welcome to the Everything Electric Show. Let's talk options. Whether it be a large home, a small home, a flat, a bungalow, there are always options available and always something you can do in your home. Hi Rich, it's great to meet you. So where do individuals start their clean tech journey? So I always say to every household, um, have a look at your energy performance certificate, often called your EPC. So most houses have one. Um, it's the certificate with the A2G rating on it. And that basically says, how efficient is my house? Um, and if it's got things that haven't been sorted, like single glazing not being replaced with double, or cavity walls not being insulated, it gives you all of that information in one place. Yeah. Now, they're not perfect, but it is probably the best place to start. So what's the basic stuff that individuals can do up front? Um, well, there's some stuff you can do on your own without the help of a contractor or a builder. And so draft proofing is probably the most common one. So if you've got leaky doors or windows, you can just go to a b &Q or a house stores retailer, mm -hmm. buy tape that can make windows um, more airtight and doors more airtight, yeah. and that'll stop drafts. So that's great for comfort. Um, some things you can do yourself as well, a like loft insulation, you can just buy that and unroll it and put it in the loft. Um, so there are a couple and they together can make quite a big difference. But beyond that, you do tend to need to get some more expert advice. So once all the improvements are made, what are the options for different sized houses? So once you've done the basics, you then need to go to an expert and find out whether you can fit something like solar panels, um, a heat pump, uh, maybe a ground source heat pump to your house. And that takes a bit more time and preparation. Coming to the Fully Charged show gives you a flavour of all the different things that are available. And our heat stand here, we've got experts available to talk through that as well. Um, it's a bit more of an involved process. Um, so these things tend to cost a bit more up front. But something like solar panels, they last for 40 years um, and they can bring down your bills forever. Um, solar panels are a great example because they pair really well with heat pumps um, and with EVs as well. Um, so over time, people can build these things up. You don't need to do all of it at once. You, the first step is to make the house you know, comfortable and efficient. Uh, and then when the time's right for you, if you're having a new roof, for example, or you've got some cash, you can get solar panels. If the boiler breaks down, get a heat pump. Um, but it doesn't all need to happen at once. Renewable energy can be put into two categories. Those that generate electricity, such as solar panels and wind turbines, and those that generate heat, such as hot water storage systems and heat pumps. But where do we start and what help is out there? It's a pleasure to meet you, Joe. With our viewers looking to make the move into clean tech, what advice do you have to give? They need to think about what they want to achieve. So is it that they want to move to a renewable technology, like an air source heat pump? Um, are they looking to cut their energy demand? So they might be looking at insulation. Um, are they looking, uh, if they're off grid, moving away from oil or generating their own electricity? So looking at solar PV panels. Um, so it really is kind of a, a tailored, uh, tailored advice that they need, and, and that's something they can get here. And in terms of support, what support is out there for them? It's a bit patchy, I think, I have to say, at best, at the moment. So um, there are organisations such as Switch, um, Energy Savings Trust, I mean, they provide very high level advice, but I would say it's not bespoke. I mean, actually, our organisation does provide bespoke advice, but it's, and it's impartial. I think the impartial aspect of it is really important. Um, that is not really there in a detailed way. Um, and for us, they have to pay for it. So and that's another barrier, obviously, as well. What about financial subsidies? You can get support uh, for fitting a heat pump. So if you've got a gas boiler or an oil boiler or an electric heating system, uh, you can get £5,000 towards the cost of installing a heat pump. Um, and that can include changing the radiators at the same time and um, probably changing the hot water cylinder as well. So that, that does help um, and that is available for uh, all households in that position. Uh, there, are, um, there are some tariff options that are coming through. I mean, I think with the energy crisis, it's meant that electricity is really expensive and there's not a lot of wriggle room by, from the energy companies to kind of be creative, I think, yet yeah, in encouraging people. But uh, companies like uh, Octopus, uh, they have a cheap overnight tariff where if you've got an electric vehicle, it's much cheaper to charge between 12 and 4. 
and you can extend that to um, other appliances. You know, you, anything you can shift into that time frame, um, you can run at a cheap electric rate. And, and that means actually that the, like te the Tepio, uh, Zeb boiler and yeah. batteries, other ways in which you can store that electricity at a lower cost, um, suddenly become quite attractive actually. So uh, there's, there's sort of some creativity within the energy market, but I hope to see that get better actually as, um, as, as we move to lower prices again. Yeah, me too, me too. <laughs>so you've done your research and narrowed down your options based on your house size and location and also on the budget available but now it's time to find out how to get the clean tech installed let's go speak to adam who specializes in designing heating systems hi Adam. it's really nice to meet you it's me could you share some of your knowledge on how to find the best installer that is an important part of the process i'd say that's much more important than choosing which like heat pump you'd want for example if you're getting a heat pump um, the installer will make literally hundreds of percent of difference in the efficiency. The type of heat pump will make less than five. Yeah. Um, so uh, yeah, that is an important part of the process. What I'd suggest to do is um, look for an installer that understands system design. It doesn't matter how many hours or years they've spent working on heat pumps, you could get someone who's never touched heat pumps but fully understands design and they will get a much more efficient uh, more um, reliable system than someone who doesn't understand system design. And system design basically means uh, spending time on sizing the heat pump by doing a uh, room uh, by room heat loss and uh, designing the hydronics, which is like the pipe work and uh, water that flows through that, as you obviously know, um, uh, and doing that in the most efficient way and running for low flow temperatures. Uh, and you, you want to kind of hear that when you speak to the installer that they're talking about low temperatures and how to get the highest efficiency. If they're talking about how to get the cheapest job done, I would probably avoid because the cheapest job is normally the most expensive because it's so much more higher in running costs. That performance, the difference in performance, is where your money is made or saved, not on the installation. So it's really important to make sure that this system has been designed specifically for them and not just mass produced for any old yeah, house. Absolutely. So. I would personally suggest that you don't get a company that designs it in-house elsewhere and then sends an installer to put in. You want the guy who's touching the pipes to understand what he's doing when he pulls back that wall and finds out the pipe work wasn't as per design and he knows how to counteract that or fix it there and then. That's how you get the top scops uh, and maximum returns. I think that's excellent advice. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> So what kind of accreditation should their installers be having? So the guy on site should have an accreditation that shows he understands low temperature system design, such as the heat geek uh, training that we provide. Nice plug there. That was, well, I mean, to be honest, that's the only training out there that really ensures that they know what they're doing. There, isn't, there is one starting to come about now, but it's, it was kind of a, a thing that was kind of ignored and swept under the rug. Thankfully, through shows such as this one, uh, that's coming a bit more to the forefront, which is amazing. The overall arching company has to be MCS registered. You have to use MCS products. Uh, installer has to have done an MCS recognized course, etc. But your focus, I mean, if they're going to get you a grant, they have to be MCS registered as well. That part's fairly easy. The time should be spent focusing on the low temperature design and making sure that they understand that. So really, that's it. It's just the low flow temperature design and that the overall arching company is MCS registered. So tell me, is there enough installers to fulfill all the clean tech that everyone wants to have fitted now? No, <laughs> <laughs> unfortunately not. Because um, systems have gone from high flow temperature, very easy to install boilers, combination boilers, um, that kind of can be fit and forgot uh, to this low temperature design. It is a grade above of understanding that you have to have to make these work properly, as I mentioned. Um, and the guys just aren't there yet. So that's the training for that is in development. We're part of that. We're going to be, have to be using things like online learning, ed tech as it's known, yeah. uh, to help accelerate that. Is it achievable to fill demand? Absolutely, yes. Um, so that is going to be uh, an issue and a strain on the consumer, but that's not a long-term thing. That is definitely being fixed as we speak. And are you find there's quite a big uptake in your courses right now? It's insane, <laughs> um, and rightly so. And that comes from a real honest, good place because our like, whole thing is to improve the industry, to renew the industry, 
uh, and it's just a sign of that the, the mentality is changing and people aren't thinking about putting boxes on walls or boxes in houses. They're thinking about lowering carbon uh, in the most efficient way and that's like, amazing. And as always, if you have been, thanks for watching.